Hello everybody, welcome to this instruction video. In this video I'd like to show you part 7 of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the Scapers Crochet Along 2018. It's been designed by Deirdre Ice from Look at What I Made. In part 7 we're going to be joining all the motifs that we've made up till now. So the diamonds and the half diamonds or the triangles, we're going to be joining them and we're going to be making a start with the border. What's important for the join is that we're going to go up a hook size for the join. And when we go back to the border, we go back to our original hook size. I'm using the Schepje Stonewashed XL yarn. That's with the large kit. If you have a different kit, you'll of course be using a different main color for this part. Because everything we'll be doing with our main color. I'll take you step by step through all the entire process of joining these motives. It's maybe not so much difficult as it is just a lot of work and I'll really, I'm really going to try to take you through this systematically. So thank you for watching and I really hope this is a useful video for you. We're going to start by working the diamonds together. We're going to start with diamonds 1 and 6 so that's contrast color 1 and contrast color 6. For me it's this orange and the blue. Check your kits exactly which diamonds are which for you. I'm going to work 6 onto 1 and I'm going to do that with a 5.5 millimeter hook with, this, with the XL yarn. So I'm going up a hook size. Now you also need to do that. Go up a hook size from whichever hook size you use to make your diamonds up to now. That's to give you more stretch and more flexibility on your join. So go up a hook size. We're going to start by taking diamonds one and six and we're going to place them right sides facing. So I've got the right side of diamond six here. Oh sorry this is diamond one. The orange one is diamond one and the blue one is diamond six. So I'm going to swip, swap diamond 6 over and place it on top of diamond 1. And they have the right sides facing. Now it's very hard to get all this in front of the camera. We're going to start with the join here in the center. So I've got the two, this is the non-pointy corner. In there, we're going to start with the join and then we're going to work along this edge here to the pointy corner. So this I'm going to zoom in and then we're going to start here. So to join the diamonds I have my main color on my hook. Okay, for me it's a five and a half millimeter hook going up a hook size. And we're going to start in the non-pointy corner and we're going to work a standing double crochet through both chain corner spaces. So I've got them marked here with the stitch marker. So in there you're going to work a, uh, a standing double crochet. So I'm just going to do that. So work a standing double crochet through both of those. You can now remove the stitch markers because I don't need them anymore. They were to mark my corner so I couldn't lose them. And now that I've worked a double crochet through them they're not going to go anywhere. I'm going to do a chain one and now work a double crochet through the next stitch. Now it's important to realize that the diamond that you have here to the front of you has the back side facing and the other diamond, the one that's to the back here, has the front side facing. That means their stitches are oriented in different ways. If you look here at this stitch, this is the post, the top of it is, well, if you're coming from this side, it's before the post and if you're looking at your um, diamond that's at the in front, if you're coming from this side, it's if that's the stitch, the, the top of it is after the post. So that means coming here, working in the next stitch means, if this is our chain one space, the next stitch here on the top diamond is after that post, so it's that stitch there. And here you're going to have to fold your work a bit. You see there's a chain one space where you're in and then that there would be the next stitch to go in for the diamond that's behind. So you can see it, it looks like it's two different stitches but actually it is the same stitch. You could, this is the next stitch and there and that is the next stitch. And you'll notice if you do 
accidentally, for example, take um, this stitch here, that by the time you get to the other side, you'll just be have an offset of one stitch, and just and if that does happen, then 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 feel just fudge that if it's uh, not the end of the world. But I'm going to do my best to show you how we can do this without having to fudge. So we're going to go to the first stitch here on the front, so the next stitch, that's that one there. And then go here, here's the chain space, the next stitch is that one. And work the double crochet. So now you have a double crochet through both chain spaces, chain one, and then a double crochet in the first stitch. We're now going to start actually joining this edge. We're going to do chain one, skip a stitch, and then work a double crochet. That's what we're going to do to the next pointy corner. So we're going to do chain one, skip the next stitch, and then go to the stitch after. Do the same here to the back. So also there, skip one stitch and go to the next, and work a double crochet. This you're going to repeat to you to the pointed corner. So chain one, skip the next stitch, skip the next stitch, and work the double. Again, chain one, skip the next stitch, go into the following, here skip a stitch, go into the following, and work the double crochet. You've now made a start on this edge, on the join. Continue here along, working every second stitch with the chain ones in between until you get here to the pointy corner. So I'll just see you when, when we're about here and then I'll show you what to do in the corner and which diamond to put on next and, and go around the corner again. Almost to the pointy corners. I have four stitches left on both sides before we get to the corner. So I'm going to work to repeat two more times. Chain one, skip here the next stitch and go to the next and also to the back. Skip a stitch and then move to the next and work a double crochet. Two stitches left. So it's chain one, skip a stitch and go to the last stitch before the chain one here and do the back do the same but it just so happens that my last stitch here is that chain four that starting stitch so I'm just going to kind of push my hook in there somewhere okay. see there's the stitch that I skipped and then that there is somewhere is that last stitch and then just bring my hook forward and complete the double crochet we're now going to move to the chain corner spaces. First do a chain one. Remember this chain one, it's surprisingly easy to forget. And then through both corner spaces, both chain one corner spaces, work a double crochet. You can now remove stitch markers because I now know where those corners are. I don't need them anymore. I'm going to do a chain Three. One, two, three. Now we can fold open our work and put our next diamond on top. I'm just going to zoom out so I can really show you where we're at. This is where we're at at the moment. You've just done this join and we're here at the top here with that chain three in the pointy corner of those two diamonds, diamond five and diamond one. Merely opened up our work. Now you take diamond 5. So this is the diamond you made with contrast color 5. I'm going to place this on top of the diamond from color 1 with the right sides facing. So this is my diamond 5. I'm going to do my best to get this a bit in front of the camera. You can see what I'm doing. Because it is all rather large. I've now got diamond 5 back side is facing me because the front sides of these two diamonds are facing. Got them on top of one another like so and then we're going to continue here in the pointy corners of, of diamond one 
and diamond 5. So I'm going to zoom in to this corner and then show you how to continue here. I've zoomed in. See, here's diamond 1 and I have diamond 5 on top of it. Chain 3, that's what we finished off with. And we're going to now work a double crochet through the corners of diamond 1 and 5. You see here I've still got it marked with the stitch marker so in that corner and here to the next. Remember you've already got a stitch in there so that really pulls this corner open. Through both of them work a double crochet. You can take out the stitch marker. don't need it anymore because now I know where that corner is. Chain 1. Remember this chain 1 here. And now we're going to do exactly the same on this edge as we did here on, on, on that first edge. So in the first stitch, and that is um, this one here, that's the first stitch. And in the back, it's that loop there. The first stitch on both. And then complete the double. Chain one. Skip the next stitch. Go to the next. Here to the back, skip a stitch and go into the next and complete the double. And this you're going to do until you're to the next corner and that will be a non-pointy corner. So again, chain one, skip a stitch, go to the next, skip a stitch, go to the next and complete the double crochet. And what's important here is that you keep on skipping every second stitch and then you'll make this join until you get to the pointy, the non-pointy corner. Then I'll just see you there. I'm almost to our next non-pointy corner here. I'm going to have, have four stitches left. Chain one, skipping this stitch and skipping one stitch to the back. And work a double crochet, chain one, skipping this one, work in the last stitch, and here skipping a stitch, work in the last stitch before the chain space, and work a double, chain one, and here in your chain corner space of both diamonds, go through both corner spaces, and work double crochet. At this point you can cut your yarn, open up this loop, you can remove these stitch markers and then just leave this fabric as it is for the moment. You now have half a hexagon. We've done this join and we've done this join on either side of the um, uh, diamond one. So this is where we are right now with the join on either side. You've got that chain three here right at the tip. Leave this for the moment and now we're going to do the other half and then we're going to join those two halves. The next three diamonds we're going to do in exactly the same way as the first three. I'm not going to show you, I'm going to, but I am going to talk you through it. So I have here square, oh sorry square, I mean diamond, diamond two and this is diamond three. I'm going to put diamond 2 on top of diamond 3 with the right sides facing. So I'm going to flip diamond 2 over on top of diamond 3. Like so. Now I have them right sides facing. We're again going to start in the non-pointy corner, that's the corner here up top. And through both chain spaces start with a standing double crochet. Chain one, then through the first stitch, work a double crochet on both sides. Chain one, skip a stitch, then go to the next, work a double. Chain one, skip a stitch, and work a double. Go all along this edge until you get here to the pointy corner. When you've worked a double crochet through both pointy corners, you do a chain three, then you'll have done this edge. And then I'll just show you where you're at at the moment and which. Um, how to put on the last diamond. When you've done this join, you'll have finished with a double crochet in that 
pointy corner and worked a chain three. Just got a stitch marker in the chain three so that I don't lose it. This is where you are at the moment. Then open up your work and then you've got these two diamonds connected with that join there in the center. Got diamond three facing me and then you've got one diamond left that is diamond number four. For me it's this purple diamond. This diamond we're now going to place on diamond three with the right side facing. So I'm just going to flip it over so I've got the back side facing me and then position it on top of diamond three. So I've got the right sides facing. And now we're going to continue again in this corner exactly the same way we've done before. So through the chain space here, I've got my finger through that chain space, also got the stitch marker in there, as well as in this chain space, work a double crochet, so joining those two, and then work this edge exactly the same way we've done before, up till you get to here, the non-pointy corner. You'll finish with a double crochet through both of these um, no pointy corners, and then you can cut your yarn. And when we've done that, you'll have two halves, you'll have these three joined together, and then we can join the two halves. This is what you have at the moment. You've got two halves. This is one half, so I've got here the three diamonds that I've connected, and I've got another half exactly the same with those three diamonds that I've connected. What we're going to do is we're going to place these two these two halves on top of each other. You see, here's the straight edge that goes halfway through the um, the blanket. That straight edge is going to line up with this straight edge. I'm going to put this one on top of that of the, my one that's at the bottom, and I'm going to have them in such a way that I have their right sides facing. So I'm placing them on top of one another like this. So I've got the back side facing me and the right sides are together. Now it doesn't matter if you have it like this or exactly the other way around so that you have um, this side to the back, it doesn't matter. Now we're going to go to the side here, you see how on this straight edge and we're going to start in this um, non-pointy corner. So I'm going to zoom in and then we're going to start in this corner. Here at your non pointy corner, the two sides on top of one another. This is on the right hand side if you're right handed, on the left hand side if you're left handed. I'm going to start with a standing double crochet through both of these chain loops. I still have the stitch markers in these positions. So I'm going to insert through both corners and then work a standing double crochet. Remove the stitch markers because at this point you don't need them anymore because you now know exactly where that corner is. Chain one and then in the first stitch work the double crochet. This here is the first, and on the other side that is the first. So this is exactly the same as what we did when joining the diagonals or the diamonds, I should say chain one, skip the next stitch, and go to the back, skip a stitch, go to the next, and work a double crochet. I'm going to continue this, chain one, skip a stitch, and then work a du double crochet. You're going to continue this until you get to the center. So I'm going to continue, and then I'll see you at the center of the blanket. I'll show you just what to do there with when you get to the pointy corner. Almost here to the center, you see here's the center where all your diamonds come together. You can just see them, you see the tips of your diamond there. I have four stitches left before I'm to the corner space here on these first two diamonds. So I'm just going to work this last bit. Just chain one, just skip the next stitch. And then here, skip a stitch and then work the double crochet, chain one, and the last one here, skip a stitch. This is my last stitch before the chain one corner. And then on the other side, skip that stitch, and then my last stitch here is this happens to be a chain four, and I'm just gonna push my hook in there somewhere. There we go. 
and then bring it back up to work the double crochet and because it's that chain four it just it just kind of tends to be stuck a bit there we go and then continue and complete the double crochet now to cross over to this side we're going to do chain one now work a single uh, here in the single chain one spaces in those chain one spaces work a double crochet on both so this is the first diamonds chain one now in the center you have these chain three loops here's a chain three loop and here on the back you've also got one that one there through both of those chain three loops work a double crochet chain one and then come to this side and here again you've got the chain one loop and there you've got a chain one corner through both of those again work a double crochet and now you're ready to on this edge do exactly the same what we've done before so that's chain one in the first stitch work a double now here the first stitch happens to be a chain four from the back it looks a little funny but I'm just going to insert here in the top and this is actually the slip stitch that I'm inserting in and then the first stitch there is that one just grab your yarn and complete the double crochet chain one skip a stitch go to the next here skip a stitch go to the next and work the double you're going to continue this till you're to the end and I'll just show you the end just to be sure but actually it's the same what we've done before so continue this chain one skip a stitch double crochet in the next on both tying this last edge together almost to the non pointy corner on the other side if you're right handed this is on the left if you're left handed this is on the right side of your work I have to work the repeat one more time so here's the last stitch and then that is the last stitch and work double crochet chain one and in your corners I've got them marked here with the stitch markers work double crochet did I do a chain one? did I do a chain one? I forgot yes I did actually I was just slightly unsure but indeed chain one and then complete with that last double crochet there you can cut your yarn and pull through that yarn tail you can remove the stitch markers and now we're ready to connect the half diamonds to our work We're now going to do going to connect the half diamonds. Now those are these, oh it's from the back, these. You've got six of these. So we're going to join them in our blankets like this. So if you've got the diamonds here, this is how you're going to be joining them. So you're going to start by opening up your work. So you've got those two halves together which you just did, so open them up like this. And then we're going to start at the diamond that's furthest away from you. So here at the top of the blanket. That's where I'm at right now. And this is my diamond here that's right at the top of my blanket. For me this is diamond one. The half diamond we're going to join along this edge here. Then here right up to the center there. And then we're going to join it here along the blue edge. That's the process that we're going to go through. So how we're going to start is we're going to take the half diamond and fold it over onto the full diamond with their right sides facing. Then we're going to start here in the pointy corner, come along, work this join until we're here to the center. Then we're going to open this up. It'll be joined there of course 
and then rotate this and fold it double again here on this side and then we'll do that join. So that's how we're going to be doing this and then when you open it up it'll be connected both here and there. So that's a process that we're going to go through. So if I just fold this open again, so this is diamond one I've got here, I've got a half diamond, I'm lying them on top of each other. On the right side of my diamond here, actually this is the left side, oh, I never know. Anyway, here on this side of the diamond, I'm going to put it up there, like so, and then we're going to start in this pointy corner here. I'm zoomed into that pointy corner. You see here, this is the pointy corner of diamond one, and this is that um, uh, half diamond we have. Good main color on my hook. One thing to just note before we start that you see the first stitch on um, actually the first stitch and the last stitch on the um, half diamond counts as a chain one space because here you have a chain one space you can use for that first double crochet we're going to make and here of course you don't really have a chain one space so this first stitch in this case is a chain stitch on the other side will be a full stitch that's going to be the stitch that we or the, the stitch that we use as though it's a chain space so I'm going to start with the standing double crochet so I've got here the first stitch is going to go to the top stitch there so that's that's a stitch and then here go through the chain space and start with the standing double crochet. Can I remove the stitch marker? Because I now know where that chain space is. I'm going to do exactly the same on this edge as what we've done with all the other edges up to now. So it's going to be a chain one. Then in the first stitch, now this is the first stitch and the other side, that there is the first stitch. I work a double crochet. Okay, chain one, skip the next stitch, skip the next stitch on both sides, and work a double crochet. Going to continue this until you get to the center. So that's going to be the point of the triangle and the and where the two diamonds meet up. So continue this chain one, skip a stitch, work a double until you get to the center and then I'll just see you there. I'm almost to the point of the triangle. You see this is the chain corner space. I've marked that with a stitch marker when we made the triangles. I have four stitches left. See four stitches there and here I've also got four stitches. That's stitch number four and this is the chain space from this diamond. So this is the non-pointy corner chain space from the diamond. So, but I need to do the repeat two more times. So that's chain one, skip a stitch and go to the next, skip a stitch, go to the next and then work a double crochet. And once more, chain one. Here take the last stitch before the chain corner space and also on this side skip that stitch and take the last stitch and that next one is your belongs is a chain one that goes with the corner and work the last double crochet. Now I've done the entire edge here of the triangle chain one and then through the chain one corner space oh sorry that's my cat he's complaining don't know why, he's hungry. Through the chain one corner space of this triangle and the chain one corner space here of the non-pointy corner of the first um, diamond you have there. Through both of them, I'm going to make a double crochet. Now I'm going to just remove the stitch mark because I don't need it anymore. And then work a double crochet. And there we go. What I'm going to do now is we need to fold our work. We need to rotate this tri um, triangle to go on the next edge here. I'm just going to zoom out and show you how to do that. Right, this is what we've just made. This was the stitch that we last made, that double crochet there. I'm just going to open up this loop. 
nothing accidentally happens to it. Okay, we've now done this join here and we now want to rotate our work so that we can now do this join here. That's the goal. So that means we're going to flip this over and then align the triangle with for what for me is here the blue um, the blue diamonds right edge if you're right handed this will be the left edge if you're left handed right handed this will be the right edge of the next diamond so align these two so that means you had to fold this diamond um, over and inward and align them here and now I'll zoom in and we'll start again at this point and then work this edge. Okay, I've just flipped everything around and zoomed back in. We're now going to start by joining this edge here, so that's on the blue diamond. Start with a chain one. I'm going to work a double crochet through the uh, corner here from the triangle and the chain one corner from the non-pointy corner of the um, diamond. So that's that one back there and that's um, that opening there. You've already got a stitch in there from the, from the first join. So in that opening and this opening, I'm going to work a double crochet through both. So through there and then through that space and work a double crochet. Now we're going to join this entire edge exactly the same way we've done before. So chain one then go in the first stitch. This is the first stitch and your first stitch here is in that one there because that's the chain space there where my fingers peeping through. And there, that's the first stitch and I need both loops of course. The entire stitch. Come on, there we go. So that's the first stitch there and complete the double crochet. And again chain one skip a stitch, go to the next, here skip a stitch, go to the next and work a double. And again chain one, skip a stitch, go to the next, skip a stitch, go to the next and work a double. Continue this until you're to the pointy corner, so that's that's the end of this, diag of, uh, of this line, you've done this entire line. Then I'll just see you at the point just to show you the last bit of joining um, oh, there is a skip, skip a stitch in there of joining this um, this edge and also how to join the next triangle. I'm almost to the pointy corner of my um, of my diamond. I have five stitches left on the triangle, four stitches left on the diamond. Now don't stress that's correct because this last stitch, stitch number five here, counts as a as a corner stitch to join with the chain one corner space there. So don't stress that you've got a stitch extra, that's correct. I'm just going to finish the repeat here. Uh, skip a stitch and go to the next on both sides. Then chain one skip a stitch here and go to this, uh, this this last full stitch there and skip a stitch and take the last stitch there before the corner space. And there we go. Now chain one and now we're going to work the corner. So that means through this stitch here and through the chain corner space. Work a double crochet. You can remove the stitch marker. I'm just going to leave it for the moment because you'll need it in a second. Because we're going to make a chain one and this stitch you need to mark. And it's very important that you mark this stitch because this chain one is the corner of your of the border that we're going to be making. So that, that chain one, you're going to have six marked chain ones when you've completed all your triangles. So do that. It, it, you'll, you'll, it'll make life easier for you. Now we've done the complete repeat. We've joined this first triangle 
to two diamonds. Now we need to join the next triangle. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit just that you can see what I'm doing. So I've got here my next triangle, this one, my next one. I'm just going to flip it over and then place this along the edge of the diamond on the other side. And now you can start, you've got the back side facing, you've got the right sides of the work together again. So flip them together. And now we can start the join here. So I'm just going to zoom back in show you how to do that join because this is actually everything's going to be exactly the same as what you've already done I'll just get you started because now you need to work a double crochet through the first stitch here because remember this first stitch again counts as a corner it's going to go through the first stitch and then go through the chain one corner space of the diamond and be sure that you get the diamond there and not for example the, this, this, this triangle that you already have here. So go through the space of the diamond and complete that double crochet. And what you have here now is you've got a, you've really got a corner there. You've got a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And that's why it's important to mark this chain one because you're not going to be able to find it later on. You're really going to have to go looking for it. So make life easy for yourself and mark that chain one. Now this double crochet is exactly the same as a standing double crochet we started the process of joining these half diamonds with. I'll just get you started but everything's going to be exactly the same. So it's a chain one and then go to the first stitch and here again go to the first stitch and work a double crochet. Again chain one, go to the next stitch and work a double and here again work a double. So Everything we've already done, repeat that for this second new diamond, or half diamond, I should say. You're going to do this six times in total then. So if I've done one with you and a little bit on number two. Re repeat for two, three, four, five, and six. And then after you've done number six, you're going to work that last double crochet, chain one you're going to mark. And then you're going to close on with a slip stitch to that first standing double crochet. And I'll just show you that last join when you're all the way around. For the moment, continue and join dim half diamonds 2 to 6. And I'll just see you for the last stitch. I'm almost round. I have two stitches and a chain here left. I have two stitches and there's a chain one space. And here is the standing double crochet that we started with, that very first one. And that one. So to finish here, chain one, skip this stitch, go to the next, skip this stitch, go to the next, work a double crochet, chain one, then through the chain stitch here, just pick up that stitch and the chain one space, that's the corner space of the diamond, work a double crochet. Now chain one, remember this chain one and mark this chain one with a stitch marker and now close on this first standing double crochet with a slip stitch. Now you're done. You can cut your yarn. You can cut your yarn, pull through, and when you open up your work, you'll have joined all your diamonds and all your triangles. I'm going to start the border. I have the main color yarn on my hook. And I've dropped back a hook size, so I've got a 5mm hook here, so go down a hook size. This is the hook size that you've used for all of your crochet work really. We only had the larger hook size for joining the motifs. So go back to your, um, your, your hook A. We're going to start in any chain 1 
corner space. You have these stitch markers, you have six of them um, around your blanket. You can start in any corner. Actually, you've got eight of them, I believe. Anyway, you've got these stitch markers. You can start in any chain space. doesn't matter which one you do. So, in any chain space, six of them. Now you've got six of them. Okay, all confused. You start with a standing double treble. So, I'm going to make some yarn over twice. And then in that chain space marked with the stitch marker, so in that space, start with a standing stitch. This is the first double treble. We're going to do a corner. We need two more in that same space. You can actually remove the stitch marker because now you know exactly where that is. So I'm going to do one, two. And one more. So you've got three double trebles here. Chain two. Now this chain 2 is your new corner. You don't have to do this, but I've got the stitch marker here and I'm just going to mark this chain 2 corner. You'll, you'll be able to find that chain 2 corner, so you don't need to do this to, um, to find the corner. But if you want to, just take the stitch marker with you. Then in that same space, we've already got the other 3 trebles, work 3 more double trebles. So you're going to have six double trebles with a chain two in the middle. There you go. So this is your new corner. Three double trebles, chain two, and three double trebles. You've got this now aligned to your pointy corner of the diamond. We're going to continue along the edge of um, a triangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to work, I'm just going to open up this loop, nothing happens to it. What we're going to do is in each chain, in each space here, and there, and there, and there, you're going to work three trebles. And you're going to do that 17 times. So all of those spaces, you're going to work three trebles. And these spaces don't look, don't all look the same, but they are all considered a space. So this first one here, work three trebles in there. And this is two and three. Then this next one looks different. You can see this space looks different, but that's because you've got the end of the row, the beginning of a row, the end of the row, the beginning of the row, and that means these spaces don't look the same because you were turning your work. That, as such, does not matter. What matters is that it is a space and you work three trebles in there. Just move my work a bit down and you can see it better. Next space, this one, work three trebles. One, two, and three trebles. Next space is this one. Now don't get scared because it's a purple um, loop and not a main color loop. So three trebles in there, exactly the same way. And three. I've now done four of these loops. One, two, three, four. We're going to do 17 in total. I'm going to make a jump in the video, but continue and work one in each of these loops. See, here's also one. There's one there and there. Here, for me, the red one. There's one here, an orange one, a green loop. And this one here will be number 17. You'll have, no, sorry, this will be number 17 here. There will be one loop left before the center of the triangle. So if you work all 17 loops it will bring you here and this is the point where I'll see you back for this one here. I've just done the 
the last three trebles. I have now have 17 of these groups of three trebles. When you've got 17, you should have one loop left before the center here of your triangle. What we're going to do is in this loop, we're going to work four trebles. We're going to skip the center here and then in the next loop on the other side also work four trebles. And then we're going to come back up and work three times um, or three trebles in each of the loops and that will be 17 loops again. So it's nice and symmetric. But in this loop work four trebles. So that's one, two, three, and four trebles. Skipping the center, go to this next loop and again work four trebles. And you'll have a bit of a gap between all of these groups, but that's okay. This is, cons this is like a baseline, this first round. So four trebles in both of those spaces. This space here is the first of 17 loops in which we're going to work three trebles. This one we work three. So one, two, three. Come to the next loop, work three trebles. Two, three. So I've now done two times with you. I'm going to do 17 in total, so you need to do 15 more. And that will bring you to your next corner. I have finished 17 times three trebles. And now you're getting, you'll be here at your stitch marker, at the chain one space. I'm going to work a new corner in that chain one space. It's going to be three times a double treble, chain two, and another three times a double treble. So twice over in that chain space, work the double treble, that's one, it's two, and number three, chain two, and then Actually, I'm going to move this stitch marker now. I'm going to hook it onto this chain 2 space. You don't need to do that. You'll really be able to see these corners without the stitch marker. But I've got it here anyway, so I'm just going to mark that corner. And then in that chain 1 space there, three more double trebles. So that's one, two, And then this is number three. This completes your corner. Three double trebles, chain two, and three more double trebles. This corner is exactly the same as the corner we started with. Here with the standing double, tre uh, standing treble, but the first of three, chain two, and again three double trebles. So these two corners are exactly the same. That means everything we've just done, you're going to repeat once more. You're actually going to repeat five more times. So that means in this space you're going to work th three trebles, then in that space, in that space, in that space. Until you're to the center where you do two times four trebles, and then again 17 times three trebles in all those loops. And when you're all the way around in this last loop, you'll work three trebles in there and then you close with a slip stitch on this first standing double treble. You close in there with a slip stitch. And then you've completed the first round of the border, and that is a base, so make sure your stitch count is correct after this round, and then we can build from here. Round two of the border. Currently with a slip stitch in that first standing stitch from round one. Going to move with a slip stitch to the chain two corner.
corner space. We've got two stitches. So we have to do one slip stitch and a second and then slip stitch into the chain two corner space. This round I'm going to start with a chain three. Now this chain three counts as a half treble and a chain one. And to complete the corner we need another half treble in the same space. This is your new corner. It's a half treble, chain one and a half treble. And I'm just going to move this stitch marker up. Not that I really need it but it's, it's just it, it's there. So I'm just doing it anyway. On this first edge, you've, you've got six edges. On the first edge we're going to do a back post double, um, sorry, a back post treble, not a back post double crochet, back post treble crochet, on every stitch. So on every stitch you do a back post treble. So one, and these will be 116 stitches. And that will bring you to the next corner space. And in there we do a half treble chain one and a half treble. And that you're going to do all the way around. So this round isn't so much difficult as it is time consuming because these back post trebles do take time. But it does give you a nice crisp edge which can be is going to be the start of the of the Banksia border that we're doing. So this nice edge really is um yeah it's 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 just a good part of the blanket to uh to define that uh, that Banksia border. I'm going to leave you at this point because you're going to work a back post treble on every stitch and when you get to your next corner you're going to work a back post treble until the last stitch. When you get to your next chain two corner you work a half double chain one and a half double. Go all the way around and when you get to this last stitch close on the chain two because that's your first half treble with a slip stitch. And when you've gone all the way around and you've joined with a slip stitch to your first stitch you're finished for this week. Leave your yarn attached because we're going to continue with the same color next week. Thank you for watching I hope to see you back soon.